You're listening to the Clear Creek Resources Podcast from Clear Creek Community Church. To hear more, check out clearcreekresources.org. Welcome, you guys, to the Clear Creek Resources Podcast. Thanks for being here. Thank you. This is awesome. Yeah, so Sherry, you've been here before with us, but welcome yes, back. Thank you. <laughs> Ryan, this is your, your first time with us, so thanks for being here. Thank you. We're excited to have you. Yes. So before we start talking about how we serve missionally, um, where we are at Clear Creek, just tell me a little bit about your roles here at Clear Creek, because you guys are both on staff. So just tell us a little bit about what you do. Sherry, you want to start? You go first. Sherry. Oh, okay. I can go first. <laughs> uh, well... Our team is made up of Ryan as the director and Amy Austin and I are both uh, Go Local Associates and we kind of split up the responsibilities. And so I'm um, giving some leadership to uh, internal things like drives and initiatives and getting the word out to our congregation Mm -hmm. about different opportunities to serve. And Amy looks at the partners and advocates. Okay, so Mm -hmm. your team, your team meaning the GO team, right? Is that what it's called? The GO team. The GO team. That's right. right. (laughs) (laughs) So Ryan, she said you're the director of GO, is that right? And that's a new role for me. So Sherry is really subject matter expert. So she, you know, (laughs) between her and Amy, they're the ones doing the bulk of the work and I'm just trying to you do a good job as figurehead. So, so. Uh, well, Not I'm true. grateful for both of you. I know. You guys are both going to be like <laughs> apologizing for yourselves this whole time. But yeah. you're both doing really, really great work. And uh, Go Ministry is a, a, just a huge part of, of what we want to do here at Clear Creek. So for people who, who don't even know what that is, you know, because you said what your, what your team is and a little bit about what you do with it, what is it? What is our Go Ministry and why do we have it? Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll take. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. Uh, you know, the word "go" is like it's kind of a it's like what does "go" mean? Sort of explaining. You know, I, I think the the initial part of that came from the Great Commandment: "Go therefore and make disciples, mm-hmm. you know, of all nations." And that's so that word sort of sticks, and mm-hmm. that sort of just conveys what what we want to do uh, in "go" is is we're a church. You know, like we're talking about you know messy season of Christmas. Uh, people diving into that messiness, how Jesus dove into that messiness for us is the same thing for uh, our neighbor. It's, it's love our neighbors well, build relationships, and really collectively fill needs for those in, in that have needs that, you know, people are hurting or or whatever. There's, there's needs out there. Mm-hmm. So being able to uh, be a church that is on mission to, to go help others is, is a big part of what we do. Yeah, I mean, I think that is is really helpful because I think sometimes when people think about the Great Commission, they think, okay, I just have to tell people, you know, and that is a huge part of what that is, actually telling people the gospel that, you know, Jesus saves us. But part of that also being missional is, is like you're saying, helping people, stepping into their mess and being this, you know, I think about Christmas time, we're talking about the incarnation and just being an incarnational presence for people, you know, actually embodying the gospel and not just telling them. Right. Well, you know, to use that phrase, hands and feet, that's Mm -hmm. what we do. That's part of what we try to encourage with our congregation. And we do that through uh, ideas about how to do it. But then also we have go local partners that nonprofits already established in the community that uh, are already doing that. And we're able to come alongside them and just help them out too. Mm -hmm. So, but so I want. That's what we want to focus on today. Is is our go local partners? Before we do that, can you guys just tell me real quickly for again for people who don't know? Because you know sometimes I do first impressions at my campus, and sometimes people are like, "Do you guys do missions? Do you guys what do you guys do?" Mm-hmm. They don't they don't know because you know that that is something that you have to sort of. Uh, be at our church for a while sometimes to understand mm-hmm. all these other things that our church is invested mm-hmm. in. So tell me, like, we have Go Local, which mm-hmm. we're going to talk about today. What what else do we have as far as Go Ministry? Yeah, I mean, there's Go Global mm-hmm. is is really the other big facet, mm-hmm. and and uh, Houston Church Planning Network is, is sort of the three places where you could call that missional, you know, locally uh, through Clear Creek and specifically Clear Creek Partners. You know, Houston, Houston Church Planning Network is helping other churches around the area, you know, share the gospel in, mm-hmm. in compelling ways. And then globally, there's also, 
you know, Carl Garcia is is working in several different continents, uh, trying to plant churches and, and share the gospel globally. So it's kind of the trifecta of different you know, from local yeah. to global. Yeah, which is, it's really amazing if, I mean, I have not been able to go on any of our Glow Global missions, but my husband's gone on a couple to Cuba and um, it, it really is, again, what, what you guys are saying, it's mm-hmm. it's this, it's church planning. So it's investing in people who are there, who mm-hmm. know the community and who are going to actually be mm-hmm. pastoring and uh, ministering in those places. And it's, it's the hands and feet, you know, it's still, it's both. It's mm-hmm. like proclaiming the gospel to the ends of the earth and at the same time helping them with, with needs, you know, that, that we can give through our church. Right. It's amazing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about some of our partners. That's what you mentioned. So for Go Local, we aren't just forming our own, you know, ways to help. We actually partner with people. Tell, tell me a little bit about what that looks like and who some of those partners are. Yeah, Sherry. Come on, Sherry. Sherry. Okay. Uh, we have 23, I think, currently uh, partners and uh we call them strategic partners internally, I guess, um, because they're they're partners, non part, not excuse me, nonprofit organizations that are. Not only can we serve, not only can Clear Creek people go and serve the community through them, but also um, through building relationships, we have opportunities potentially to share the gospel. Mm-hmm. So there's 23 of them, like I said, right now, and uh, some of the big ones that we. Um, do a lot through, and we have a lot of opportunities for people to serve through them. Our sanctuary, um, we do a lot with them. Um, Anchor Point, Clear Lake Food Pantry. Um, yeah, Lighthouse. Lighthouse, of course. And like, you know, Clear Lake Food Pantry, Lighthouse Ministry, those are, like we think about Christmas season, you think about opportunities yes. mm-hmm. to do to both of those things, to interact with people. Mm-hmm. Uh, to maybe build a relationship and be able to share the gospel, but mm-hmm. also to serve a need. That's like the you know food pantry is one of those opportunities. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Lighthouse Christian Ministry does a lot in the like Baycliff neighborhood specifically. They're really focused on a lower income uh, neighborhoods, folks that have different kinds of needs, and they serve that community really well over and over again. So it's like one of those really cool mm-hmm. opportunities during, especially during Christmas seasons mm-hmm. and things like yes. that. How, how do y'all um, decide who we're going to partner with? Um, yeah. hmm. That's a good question. That's yeah, good so question. Uh, <laughs> it's it's not it's not super <laughs> systematic or yeah. mathematical, but I do. Th- we have. I'm going to say that, and I'm going to say we have eight criteria <laughs> mm-hmm. that we measure we our You're partners committing. with. <laughs> I, one of the main ones is: is there an opportunity for uh, small groups, individuals, and you know people that are part of our congregation to go? And, and serve that organization and, and what's the demographic of, of what they're doing. Um, it's not a it, matter of fact, we have a couple of partners that aren't necessarily Christian organizations. Um, that's not necessarily a factor. We want to have the opportunity to share the gospel, gospel if it comes up. Um, but we really want people to go out and experience um, what it's like to serve others. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's analogous to, we were talking about it recently, analogous to giving. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's, not, it's not that God can take care of their needs, but he's, he's choosing to use us. He's choosing to say, hey, you, you're, you're walking with me. This is, this is how you love people well. And that heart change experience, when you go and do that, it's perspective giving, you know, f- you know from here, like, man, all of a sudden my problems are smaller. All of a sudden I, I can really feel you know, me serving well with people and, and loving others well, that changes my heart as well as it changes their heart. So it's, it's mm-hmm. this beautiful thing that you can experience. So that's, those are the opportunities we're looking for. It doesn't always mm-hmm. meet that. There are just sometimes, sometimes you're dropping canned food goods off at the pantry and that's, that's okay too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the heart change happens when you're interacting with others that are just yeah. living different experiences than you are. So. Yeah, um, I, I love that because I think, you know, you would expect this conversation to really be about how we're going to be impacting other people. Mm. And it is. We really hope so. But it also is It's going to transform us if we invest in that. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, anytime we're generous, we're, we're looking a little bit more like Jesus. Yes. I mean, that's our goal. Yes, that's true. Um, 
a, a small story is uh, I was fortunate enough to go to Honduras a couple of times, actually, on mission trips. And I wondered what God was showing me, like, I'm not going to regularly come to Honduras, so what is it you want me to learn from this trip? And I just felt like he was saying, you know, what can you do uh, to feed the people at home? Because food is such a big deal there mm -hmm. when you go to on one of the Honduras mission trips. So I looked around for how I could be involved in something like that at home. And so as Ryan was referring to, it's like that relationship that, you know, obviously vertical relationship. And then how can I show that love outwards? Mm -hmm. And so that's that's what I try to do. That's what we hopefully are are wanting for others to do too. Yeah. So if somebody is thinking the same thing, oh, I, I do want to do that, mm -hmm. um, how how do they find out how to? Do we have a list? Do they Who do they talk to? There's a list. There is yeah. a list? <laughs> there is a list. Oh, I, I don't know. I would, we would say two things. To, to be, Yes, there is a list. I mean, if you go to clearcreek.org, lo serve locally. Mm -hmm. There's a list of, of our strategic partners. All 23 of them are there. Um, but we, you know, we encourage folks. We want to make it easy and concise, but at the same time, we want to challenge folks to research. And that's, to me, part of the heart change mm -hmm. is prioritizing that as something that you would you want to do. Uh, because you you know that's valuable for both you and, and uh, people in the community that need help. Um, mm -hmm. So so we have lists out there, but it's like yeah, reach out to Crystal Matthews at at uh, Lighthouse Christian Missionary. Re you know, mm -hmm. reach out to Megan Lagoy at the Sanctuary Foster mm -hmm. Care. See how you can get plugged in. That that will be motivational in itself if you mm -hmm. reach out to these organizations as as a small group or whatever, and, and get going into it. The other thing I would say is it's not necessarily all about partners. I mean. What's your circle of influence? Uh, where where do you feel like God has led you, given you talents, given you resources, to your neighbors, to the school that your kids go to, to your workplace? I mean, there are lots of opportunities. If you're seeking and asking and trying to build relationships and get to know people, needs mm -hmm. pop up all mm -hmm. over the place. Mm -hmm. And and whether or not you have eyes to see those things and, and you, you take action on those is, is dependent on where you're at in life and, and how you're viewing things. But if if you start asking questions and start trying to build relationships, they will those opportunities will be there. And I think sometimes those are the most genuine and the most beautiful. It's like when you have a coworker or something that you may not know their life story, you may not know that they have a you know, a mom going through cancer or something something compelling that you're like, I can I can bring a meal to them or mm -hmm. I can do something small. Those are the really give them those a ride, are the neat ones. Whatever is needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it's both and it's yeah, there's there's partners that are doing awesome things yes. in our community, but you can also individually do awesome things with those you're surrounded with already. That's some mm -hmm. of the where God has placed you. Yeah, I, I think that's one of the things I really love about our church is that um, we we really do want to partner with people in lots of different ways. This is one example of partnering with the people at our church to go and to be generous. But it's also not just that. That's not the end goal. It's to just have a list that, that you're going to maybe twice yes. a year. The goal is a really a transformed heart to be thinking mm -hmm. all the time, how can I love and serve and give wherever I see needs? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's not transactional. It, sometimes mm -hmm. it's, you may be doing something that you may not even think is, is going or mm -hmm. giving for years until someone tells you that that was the impact on their life or mm -hmm. whatever, whatever that is. Sometimes it's just having conversations or being there for somebody. Mm -hmm. Some of those really simple things are some of the most, you know, transformative. I think it doesn't, I mean, it can be huge, you know, uh, God called me to give a car to somebody. Uh, that's not a bad thing. That's an awesome thing. Sure. But it can be something more simple. Recently, we heard about um, the gals in my small group heard about a family who were fostering. It was a grandmother and grandfather. Mm. It was a family placement, five kids from diapers wow. to a senior in high school. Wow. And they were getting ready to retire. And instead, they have five children all of a sudden. And so through Susan Wesley, who heard about them, um, it filtered down to my small group, and uh, several of us signed up to take dinner a couple of nights. And that's an easy thing for 
ladies who like to cook, you mm-hmm. know, to take food. And you think that doesn't cost very much. It must not mean much. But it does to somebody mm-hmm. that is had their world turned upside down, you know. So that was just an easy way to bless. So it can be a challenge, but it doesn't have to be a challenge. I think that is, <laughs> is really, really helpful because I was even, while you are talking, I was thinking through just the importance of, you know, trying to discipline yourself for both of those types mm-hmm. of ways of loving mm-hmm. and serving. Like the things that are like, I don't want to do this. I don't <laughs> want to go to this place. I don't want to do this type of service. Yes. But that's a, that's a good discipline. But it also, at the same time, just, yeah, using what God has actually given you and gifted you for and Correct. stewarding it for other people yes. is part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, our colleague Amy shared a story with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a simple one is, you helped me with this one, but it was, you, <laughs> you know, musicians that uh, yeah. they had musical talent and, and there was a community that had... Um, Project Joy and Hope is one of our strategic partners that um, they have different houses on their property and families go to live there while children are undergoing treatment for life debilitating illnesses. So they were just going door to door. Playing music for them, you know, yes. sort Which of. That the, is, that's, that's amazing. beautiful. Yeah, and yeah. they just took it upon themselves to reach out to Project Join Hope yeah. Yeah. and say, "Can we come with their instruments?" And yeah. went around playing. So, sort of the the Christmas Carol esque exactly. version yes. of that but it's just cool. And it what's cool is you know, folks don't want necessarily credit for that kind of stuff. They're mm-hmm. just like, "Oh, I can see mm-hmm. where I can fill a need, or or I have mm-hmm. a talent that I think would be yes. joyful to for somebody else to receive," and I'm gonna. I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to find out where I can plug in. Yeah. That's nice. And we, I know we, we have the list of partners, which mm-hmm. it really, really is helpful. And I think also when you're just out there in the community, sometimes you, you say, oh, other people could be doing this too. Because, you know, one time there was something that I thought we should be helping with. And I think it was, probably, I think it was Chris Austin. He was like, well, do you want to be? You know, like, he's like, great. He's like, they can be, we can partner with them, but you have to be our liaison. Because it's always somebody from our church who's sort of the go between, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever organization we're partnering with in Clear Creek. We call them advocates. Okay. And yes. And when you go to that list on the website and uh, there's a little description of the partner and a website link. So you can go and take a look at it yourself. And the advocates contact info is listed there too. So theoretically, you can reach out to the advocate and they will know more Mm -hmm. possibly than you could find on the website. Mm -hmm. Because they're involved. Yes. They are already serving there. And that's one of the reasons that they were chosen to fill that role. Yeah. Yeah. And I Mm -hmm. I would say just technically, we're not quite there yet, but the intent is with the advocates and with ourselves is if somebody calls up or somebody wants to Mm -hmm. know information uh, about a certain organization is for us to be concise about, yep, this is kind of the opportunity you have to serve there, or this is what the organization looks like, and this is what they do. Uh, that way, it's easier for people to sort of choose one if that's what they're looking for. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what The menu of options, mm-hmm. you know, I call it the Yelp menu. You know, <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you need to eat lunch, like you want to know, I want a burger today. Yeah. Like I'm not feeling this steak. This is how I feel. <laughs> yeah. that, I think that's really helpful, though, because it is a difficult step for people for people, for a lot of people, for all of us, really. Mm-hmm. And so to be able to say, oh, there's all, I don't, I don't have to do everything. I can't do everything, but I can do one of these things. Mm-hmm. I can choose from this menu and still give and serve. Yes. Yeah. And I was probably, I was going to caveat off what Sherry said earlier too, is, is some, sometimes it is big things. Um, so we do have a little known uh, secret mm. and co that we have some funding. Ooh, this is exciting. Yes. <laughs> we ha- it's not well advertised, so we're going to get better at that. But uh, we do have some small funding. If a group has something big that they want to do um, and it's it's a compelling thing and they can get most of the way there financially or resource-wise but not quite there, reach out to us. We, we have some funds that we can kind of come alongside you and, you know, split the cost and those mm. kind of things. So to make it a a bigger, better thing. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I did not know that. That's really, really cool. See, that was a secret. Yeah. 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 Just, we need to just keep going. What, what other secrets can you tell us? <laughs> that's all I got. That's good. I'm going to run out of money after that one. <laughs> so you guys have said, you know, you can, any individual can go online mm-hmm. and look through this list, you know, just being out there in the community, but you also have mentioned groups a couple of times. Mm-hmm. And so just, just talk to me a little bit about the role that, that groups play in how we do go 
all of Globe Ministries, but go local yeah. specifically. I'll, I mean, I'll take a stab at that one. Okay. Um, I think, you know, like we say for groups in general, it's the primary mechanism with which we make disciples. And the reason for that is because in that small setting, you, you get the relationship building, you get people knowing one another. Well, one aspect of that is you get to learn people's families, needs, other things within that small circle, or, you know, the 10 people that you're sitting around with, they know somebody that has a significant need or is in a season where they really need some help. And so, you know, it's like an exercising of a muscle. Mm -hmm. It's exercising that within group of, of trying to discern what others needs are and where they might be just like perfectly tailor fit to fill that need. Um, I'll give you one personal example. Tasha and I had a, a couples group a couple of years back and um, there was a, a, one of the couples knew somebody that was just in a spot. I think she had just re recently gotten divorced, didn't have a lot of income and was having to move out into an apartment and she didn't have any furniture. It was like, well, I mean, what's it taking? You know, she had okay. little kids. It was like, well, she needs a crib. Okay. And she, she might need another day bed or a couch or something. It's like, well, we can, mm -hmm. between the 12 of us, we can yeah. help with that. <laughs> and so th that's what we did. We, we were like, okay, we see the need. And, you know, it was a, it was a blessing for her. She was really grateful. And, and then you stay in contact with that person afterwards and get to know them and, and hear about how her, you know, progress is going and how the kids are doing. And so it's really, it's really a neat picture. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we can all make an impact and this is in one sense, it's an individual discipline. You know, it's, it's like you said, it's like this relationship between us and God that we're then giving out to other people. But, but when we do it corporately, there's something really beautiful and special about that. I mean, that's really the church, the body of Christ, you know, being the body of Christ together out there because we all need each other. And I, I just think that that's a really important part of being in a group and doing this together. We can all go online and find it and do it, but it's also, it's less intimidating when, when mm -hmm. you're with a group of people too. You know, sure. you can make a big impact. It's a little bit easier to step out. There's lots of reasons. It's true. Why it can be good to go <laughs> that direction. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we also have, sorry, you didn't really ask this question, but doing it corporately, we have what we call drives and campus yeah. initiatives. So that's another opportunity to do things mm -hmm. as a church body. Um, a couple of times a year, we do what's called in community impact events. Um, so each campus does a thing close to them, usually. And it could be anything from, you know, building a fence or painting rooms or doing landscaping. I mean, it's all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we do three drives throughout the year. Uh, we're in the middle of Christmas drives right now. So, yeah, still have so an opportunity. Get involved. Still yeah, have so an opportunity. Tonight. tonight, church on Wednesday, yes. people. Yes. <laughs> and Sunday. You know, yes, I don't Sunday. Know when... uh, yes. Sunday's the last not, uh, day of collection for 528, okay. and it's the beginning of collection for East 96. So share the where that stuff's going. That's okay, I can helpful. do that. Yeah, yeah that's great. <laughs> uh, 528 uh, is partnering with Barrier Turning Point, and uh, let's see. Clear Lake uh, is partnering with Clear Lake Intermediate School, and Egret Bay and Wednesday Night are partnering with GUM. And I mention those in particular because Galveston Urban Ministries, because they are each setting up uh, a Christmas store. So everything that Clear Creek donates is then put in a Christmas store, and their clients or their student families or whatever Can are able shop. to go there and shop for their Christmas presents. Mm -hmm. And then East 96 is partnering with um, Lighthouse Christian Ministries to stock up on their pantries uh, of things that they give away to their clients there in their neighborhood. Those are so, really, really great opportunities. Yeah. I mean, I've we've done the store thing before, and it's yes. such a great way to give people, be, to be generous and give them their own autonomy mm -hmm. and yeah, just love Very them nice. really well during Christmas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So people can do that. They can still do that. So. They can still do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's also, I mean, that's one way to do something that's not that intimidating. I, I really appreciate that you guys are saying, like, you can do it, something that's just your gift. You can do something mm -hmm. that's simple that's parting with us. It maybe mm -hmm. isn't that intimidating. Donate, mm -hmm. you know, or you can do something that God's calling to you that's real big and real hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all of those things are, like you said, it's flexing a muscle. It's just this discipline that exactly. eventually, you know, is easier and changes you. Yeah. It does. 
Yeah, one of the things that Sherry mentioned that maybe not on people's radar is is school partnerships. I mean, mm-hmm. each of the campuses mm-hmm. has a sort of a school partner that we we try to love on and pay attention to. And it, you know, the post COVID world where you know there was a lot of mental uh, issues with with children coming back or just being a part of you know in person schools and and the hardship that the teachers have gone through. I mean, there's a lot of opportunities to dive into that. I know our elementary school. Uh, the PT, uh, PTA just did a, um, a like a potluck soup for the teachers and the teachers loved it. Just things like that. Yeah. It's just super, super low threshold. Like, oh, I can mm-hmm. make a crock pot of soup. But it it really big brings joy. Yeah, it brings, brings a big impact to the teachers that have been working hard. So. Yeah. We recently did. This was through a contact that Aaron Lutz had uh, put together these boxes for counselors. Um, each campus did one and did and gave it to the school that they partner with the most. And it's just snacks, basically, that counselors can give their kids when they come in to, you know, take a breather or share a problem or work on homework or whatever. And that was that was cool. It's really, really yeah. cool. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, that's something that, like, these counselors don't have to go mm-hmm. and do themselves because that happens so much in, you know, the educational systems. But also it's a way to even love the kids that these mm-hmm. counselors are seeing. So... It's, it goes deeper than we usually see when we're whenever we take part in things like this. And I think those are kind of uh, interesting things like that because people people might not know that off the top of their head that when they give that's in their tithe that's part mm-hmm. of what they're supporting. So I I was fortunate enough to be able to drop off a couple of those boxes, but I never saw the kids. But so each of us has a little part, I guess is Mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say. So if all you're doing is putting some money in an envelope and turning it in, you have a part in that too. And that's a great thing. It is a great thing. So what else could people be doing, particularly during Christmas time? You mentioned the ways we're partnering in church and you mentioned a pantry. And what else did you say that is specific to now? Um, Almost all of the the partners mm-hmm. sort of ramp up in Christmas season. Okay. Like I mentioned, you know, Lighthouse Christian Ministry it does a lot during Christmas season. And a lot of it is that, um, you know, in addition to just the drive stuff, mm-hmm. you, you know, you can donate or donate your time or, or talents to these organizations for their shopping, you know, what, mm-hmm. what, what's the term they're using? The shopping experience? Oh, I don't know. The, you know, low... But- Lower dollar items oh, yes. that are doing yes. you know, those kind of... But they're, those organizations in particular, I don't know about Clear Lake Intermediate, whether they've had their store or not, but Gum and Barry Turning Point are still looking for people to help wrap presents for the store. So that's yeah. something you can do. Mm-hmm. And you can find those sign-up sheets through our uh, website. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I, mean, I, I just like some that you don't think about, like Birthday Joy program, mm-hmm. everyone's focused on Christmas and Christmas presents and things like that. Uh, some of those types of organizations maybe don't receive mm. things during, and, you know, Birthday Joy program, it's it's giving birthdays to kids that wouldn't otherwise have them in foster care kind of situations. Um, you know, sometimes during Christmas season, as people that have like December birthdays know, sometimes <laughs> yeah. it gets blended together or completely <laughs> forgotten. So it's you know, they're all, they're all doing stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, that's or, great. That's really helpful. Or seniors, senior citizens. Uh, we have a story of one of our small groups that are going to Lighthouse to put on a luncheon for senior citizens. They're doing door prizes and games that's and awesome. uh, lunch. So there are different opportunities. Lighthouse is always a good one where you can do a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anchor Point in particular is looking for stocking stuffers. A lot of these things you can find by going to our Go uh, Facebook group. If you're not a member, you should be. So just <laughs> go there and click. <laughs> and we know there's, all, all, there's, there's a lot of opportunity. <laughs> We have a lot of people going to this church. There's only a, a few people part of that page. So <laughs> yeah. join the page. I Sherry mentioned that earlier, and I think it was a really good point that she made is, you know, I mean, I would confess I'm on Facebook just about every day. And most of the stuff, it's easy to tell what your interests are, mm-hmm. for instance, on on your social media stuff. Um, you know, if I challenge you to, if if you want to serve the community, start liking some of those organizations, Mm -hmm. and then you'll get that kind of stuff in your feeds, you know, developing the habits, using the muscle 
of, of being generous or serving others, that some of that stuff, that's a helpful habit to have is, yeah, I'll, I'll like the sanctuary foster care page and then mm-hmm. I'll start receiving their things. And it just changes mm-hmm. me and my heart every day when I'm on Facebook anyway, because I can't avoid it. I'm bad yes. habits, but at least that's a better habit um, that I can participate in and then start seeing some of the stuff. That, oh, I didn't know they were having a field day mm-hmm. that I can go participate in, things like that. That's great. I mean, that's so practical and real and just a first step that anybody can do mm-hmm. is start to just Easy. on Facebook mm-hmm. invest even emotionally in some of these organizations. Mm-hmm. Which you know where you guys are talking about all the different partners we have, I just keep thinking like, this is really, this is just so biblical. I mean, you already said this is the great commission to, to, to go on behalf of Jesus, but even, you know, I mean, every prophet who says, take care of orphans and widows Mm -hmm. and seek justice. That's, that's really what this is. This is, this is showing the world that God cares for, for the least among Mm us. And it's, you know, everything you guys have mentioned, God cares for them and loves them. And so, it's our responsibility as God's people to, to do that well. Yeah. And it, I mean, you know, in Acts, Jesus already gives us a beautiful picture of what that first church, you know, looks like. It's like, you know, every need was met because people were, you know, selling their things and, and giving to others. And that's that's the model that, you know, we're trying to replicate in, in this modern day age with Clear Creek Community Church. It's like, it, it just looks a little, it's not just church, it's church differently. It's, mm-hmm. it's people engaged on mission and living purposely for Jesus. That's, that's the difference. Yeah. And the, the fundamentals never change, but now it's, mm. it's Facebook likes. Right. Yes. <laughs> and that's good. And that's okay. That's yeah. like the, that's still God's mission in our context, yeah. which is, that's what we want to do. That's right. Yep. So you you have given me so many practical things, but so someone's listening and they're like, all right, I'm ready to just do something. I mean, just what would you tell them? What would you just, what's a first step to just sort of start a journey of just being on mission right here? We just went through 40 days of prayer. So I'm going to say, start there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Take 10 minutes silently, pray about what, have God introduce you to the things that you might have missed or you might have dismissed or just passed by because you were busy. Take a silent moment and, and you know, try and discern what those things are. And I, most of the time, God will lead you in some way or another, give you a big fat sign of being like, yeah, you can do that. Go ahead mm. and do that. And it might be an immediate like, oh, I don't know <laughs> if I can do that. Dive into that, whatever that is. And after you know, after prayer, I mean, if, if you really don't, you're not engaged in, in anything at the moment, I mean, call us, check out the website in terms of a mm-hmm. partnership, uh, just to kind of get that muscle working of, of a first repetition mm-hmm. of, of going and seeing needs. Then all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> when I started in go, it's like, oh man, I didn't, you know, this is an upper middle class community in League City. There's a lot of need. Mm. There's a lot of hurting people. There's a, there's a lot of things that we can do to love others well, uh, if you go looking, it's just under the surface. You're willing to see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would. I I completely agree. I like the starting with prayer stuff. <laughs> one of my favorite Hillsong songs is Hosanna, and one of the lines is that in that is "Break my heart for what breaks mm-hmm. yours." I mean, you just pray it, and He'll show you. I mean, if that is your heart's desire, He'll show you where to use the gifts that He's already given you. Um, and how you can help others around you. So, Well, I am so grateful for both of you. I'm glad that people got to hear just, I mean, a little tiny bit of what you guys are doing in your own lives and also leading for our church. Really, really grateful for you both and thankful for that our church yes. is invested in our yes. community um, in the world. So mm-hmm. thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I would probably say one last, I'm, I'm grateful the people of, Clear Creek. I mean, mm-hmm. we hear, we get to hear the stories. People don't like to share stories about going. <laughs> That's you true. Know, they don't want credit for it, which yeah. is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of really good people mm-hmm. out there weekly, monthly mm-hmm. doing stuff. So, I mean, that's keep going, mm-hmm. you know, invite others yes. to join you. Cause yeah, that's, absolutely. that's, uh, I think we're already doing it. It's it just, let's do more of it. Let's do more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If you haven't yet, make sure that you hit subscribe down below and check out clearcreekresources.org. We have videos, books, and sermons on there, as well as our audio podcast. Thanks for watching.